All right, everyone, this is Josh Rubin for East West Healing. Today, I want to talk about the adrenal thyroid energy system relationship. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button to show us a little support. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification button. So every Wednesday when we put out a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. All right, the story goes like this. We eat food to support our system, to support thyroid hormone conversion, so we produce energy at the cell level because thyroid hormone is the only hormone in the body that can actually get into or, or supply all our cells so we can produce energy. And all the cells in the body, the 72 trillion, 52 gazillion, whatever the number is, it always changes. There's a lot, right? It's the only hormone that can influence your cell. So we eat food, we do it strategically to quiet the system down, support thyroid hormone conversion, to produce energy production, which is like putting money in the bank. It's saving money. It's building that metabolic reserve and resiliency. So if we get hurt, get sick, miss a meal, we have the reserve, it doesn't really affect us, right? We're on that health curve, we're living here, speedometer, right? We're living here 80, 90% closer to health, not 100% OCD, but that, you know, 80, maybe 90%, we're finding the balance, we're finding our groove, but we have that reserve. So if we do miss a meal or something, boop, it doesn't move that much. But if you're, if you're here at 30, 40, 50%, you're closer to disease and symptoms. So if you do something like that, it affects you, right? It's resiliency. It's obviously a lot more tricky than that, right? It's not just about thyroid hormone. I know, you know, a lot of people promote that. At one time we promoted that, but as you learn more and you evolve, there's more to it. Um, a lot of people promote in this pro-metabolic world, it's all about sugar. Like we just eat more sugar and we eat more carbs that the seas are gonna separate, the clouds are gonna open up and it's gonna be rainbows and sprinkles all the time. It's not that simple. Uh, it's not just about sugar. Really what it's about is, it's that marriage. Do we have the right minerals? Do we have the right hormone? You know, and can we activate oxygen? This is the most important piece when it comes to energy production at the cell level, the powerhouse of your cell. It's like putting wood in a furnace and getting the fire going and heating your house and creating this nice and efficient environment. So when you produce Energy, really what you're doing is you're producing all your antioxidants. We've talked about this before, right? Glutathione peroxidase, superoxide dispatase, catalase, cytochrome oxidase, all these different antioxidants that you produce. You don't need to take them because you produce them. You just have to support your body in a way so you can produce them, right? So you don't need to take all these synthetic supplements. But when you produce energy, number one, you keep the feedback cycle going so you can produce more energy. You can produce more mitochondria. You can make yourself more metabolic, like a just strong, healthy machine, but you produce antioxidants, right? So you can clean up free radicals, all these different things, decrease inflammation, regulate the stress response, nourish your nervous system, and create this nice, healthy environment. So if you do step into the stress response, you can balance, you can adjust, adapt, but also know what you need to do to get out of that stress response and come back to homeostasis. If you're not producing energy, you're producing, you know, oxidative stress, stress externally is oxidative stress internally, right? When it's chronic, it becomes inflammation. When it's even more chronic, it becomes calcification. We're producing cytokines, interleukins, all these inflammatory things. It's like walking around the forest and just throwing torches that are lit on fire into the forest, right? Tons of inflammation, tons of fire, tons of peroxidation. This is not where we want to be. This produces exhaust fumes, right? You can take all the antioxidants you want. It's like trying to put out a fire for a forest fire with a fire extinguisher. It's not going to work. We have to change. We have to change our environment to create change, to decompensate all the way back down and produce energy again, right? Which allows us to pay off that debt. Right? So the question is, are you using pennies to pay off your debt? Or are you doing it in a way that's gonna allow you to pay off your debt, right? But eating a living away that you're saving money, spending a little money and that feels good, but you're saving money too and you're paying off your debt. That's how we wanna eat and live. Now, coming back to the original topic, what's the importance here? Well, we developed our RTM method based on this restoration diet nutrition method because if we eat the right foods, it's not just about the foods, but if we eat the right foods and we find what foods work for us, some people do better on more dense foods. Some people do better on a mix. Some people do better on lighter foods. So we have to find that balance and that will shift maybe based on your cycle, based on your seasons, based on your stressors, 
based on your healing phases, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. We, we always have to tune in so we can fine tune and meet our needs. We can't eat the same way every day and think we're always meeting our needs because those needs shift. Maybe you work out one day and maybe you don't. Maybe you're in school all day one day and maybe you don't. Maybe one day you're at work and you're in meetings all day and the other day you're sitting behind your desk. Your needs change and what you eat and when you eat has to meet that. So we eat this way to nourish our system, to bring in minerals, to bring in fat soluble vitamins, to support enzymatic reactions. And the end result of that is really to support energy production, right? But what we're doing as well is we're decreasing that stress response to bring us back to homeostasis. We're paying off our debt because we're producing antioxidants. We're changing our environment because we're producing antioxidants. So we're creating this nice, nice healthy environment, but we're also, Removing the kink so we can support thyroid hormone conversion. We're putting minerals in the body that, as well as thyroid hormone conversion, support energy production, right? So when we do that, a lot of things are happening here beneath this. And really what's happening is that adrenal thyroid relationship, right? So what happens is if we're always, if the adrenals are always taking it on the chin, they can't do their job. They can't regulate inflammation. They can't regulate blood pressure. They can't regulate mineral corticoids. They can't regulate ceruloplasmin. Same thing with the thyroid. If you're chronically stressed, if you're living beyond your means, if the demands being placed in the system exceed what the system can handle, the thyroid is going to be affected. If the adrenal is affected, the thyroid's affected and vice versa. Hands down, they go together because the adrenals regulate the availability of fuel. The thyroid regulates the burning of that fuel. You don't have fuel, thyroid can't burn. It is that simple. So anytime you have chronic stress, this HPA stress, right? You have that adrenal thyroid relationship. What happens is of course, you're gonna block thyroid hormone conversion, right? As we talked about before, you're gonna chelate very important minerals. When you're chronically stressed, you produce different proteins that chelate very important minerals from the body, magnesium, sodium, potassium, copper, right? So when they're taking on the chin, they can't do their job, but in a stress-free environment, now, don't run with that and be like, well, Josh, we can't do that. You know, we can't live in a stress-free environment. I'm not saying live in a bubble. I'm saying build resiliency. Life is stress, especially with the current societal landscape. Life is a stress, but we can build resiliency to that with what we eat and when we eat, how we live. What is our sleep schedule? Do we take me time during the day? Do we do the things we love? Do we have these little things that we do to resource ourselves? Do we check in with our body? Do we just wake up? Get on our phone, drink coffee, get out the door, don't eat till lunch, have pizza, don't eat all day, go to CrossFit, come home and have dinner and drink beer. Or are we fasting? Or are we doing these restrictive diets? That's not meeting our needs, right? So we have to build resiliency to these stresses to put money in the bank, right? So we, we can navigate this landscape in a much different way. You have to ask yourselves, how come some people are not super stressed and some people are? We live in the same world, right? It has to come back to metabolic reserve and resiliency. So in a stress-free environment, meaning when it's not chronic, right? We should be able to go into that stress rate and come back because we have the resources, right? So in a stress-free environment, the adrenals not only do all the things I recommended, right? Availability of, availability of fuel, regulate inflammation, blood pressure, mineral corticoids, the list goes on, but they stimulate the liver to produce ceruloplasmin. At the same time, the relationship with the thyroid does the same thing. So they work together in, in synchronicity here. The thyroid is an oxygen sensor as well, and it does the exact same thing. It'll stimulate the liver to produce ceruloplasmin. So a lot of people, when they talk about energy production, are talking about just T3. They're talking about just thyroid hormone, or they're just talking about copper. Just eat liver. Just take this copper supplement. You're going to be fine. Unfortunately, you're missing the boat here, right? Because you're talking about step three, four, and five. You're missing steps one and two, which is eating and living in a way to reduce the chronic stress response, build up re a resiliency and free up these pathways so the adrenal and thyroid not only could do what they're designed to do, with this fuel and fuel to burn, but they can communicate and stimulate the liver to produce ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin is bioavailable copper. It's a peroxidase. And what it does is when your liver is loaded with ceruloplasmin, so copper is stored in your liver, it's, it's loaded into ceruloplasmin with retinol, right? And ceruloplasmin is a protein that in a sense 
It activates oxygen, going back to what I said at the beginning. So in that stress-free environment, adrenals and thyroid communicate. They support the liver to produce ceruloplasmin. Now we can activate oxygen. So if we have that glucose, we have that thyroid hormone, we have the retinol and the copper from our food. Now we can use all this because of steps one and two to produce energy, money in the bank, right? We increase mitochondrial biogenesis. We increase antioxidants. We change the overall environment. As they say, you can't heal in the same environment. You got sick. This is what we're talking about, right? So think about this. I know it's a lot to take in, but this is what our approach is really based on. So if you want to learn more about it, we have some free downloads in the description here at 10 Tips with Thyroid Health. We do a free live um, on Zoom. You can check that out in the description every other Friday, as well as we have a nice entry level balancing the body budget guide that'll help you just kind of put this foundational piece together to get the ball rolling, to do everything that I just talked about. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out. Peace.